Operant conditioning is the process through which organisms can learn to engage in or refrain from making certain responses. It was most famously explored by B.F. Skinner in the 1930s and 40s. Operant conditioning is a relatively simple process, but its usage can be applied to complex behaviors as well. There are two main components of operant conditioning that ultimately influence an organism's behavior. Punishment and reinforcement. Punishment involves providing a response designed to decrease behavior, while reinforcement involves providing a response designed to increase behavior. Regarding reinforcement, the probability of behavior can be increased by removing a stimulus, known as negative reinforcement, or adding a stimulus, which is positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement is often regarded as an interesting topic within psychology because it involves the possibility of manipulating behavior. In fact, there have been numerous studies on both animal and human subjects. Back in May 2014, an experiment on large boa snakes was conducted to see if they could be trained to press a lever in order to receive a food reward. Results showed that a large snake could indeed be trained to use its snout in order to access food. The results are paramount in the fact that the snakes are mammals with cognitive processes similar to humans. Thus, the principles of these findings can be utilized and applied to human subjects. Based on findings similar to this, operant conditioning has been used to treat psychological disorders. Back in the 1960s, a group of doctors wanted to use positive reinforcement to condition a young anorexic girl to feel better about eating. So the researchers carefully designed a program using positive reinforcement to condition the girl to eat. Initially, the researchers did nothing in order to establish a baseline for her behavior. Then, the clinic's attendants were told to initiate a period of non-reinforced behavior by ignoring any of the subjects' complaints about eating. During this time, the nurses were to ignore all the patients' claims of aches and pains in regards to eating. Finally, the attendants were instructed to initiate a positive reinforcement period in which the nurses were instructed to award the subject with high praises based on how much food she had eaten, and she was granted certain privileges based on how much weight she had gained. Initially, praises and other rewards were given for smaller amounts of food, but gradually the amount necessary to be eaten to gain a reward increased. Any positive statements the subject made toward the idea of eating were given high praise as well. This procedure was found to be pretty effective for treating anorexia. As such, we suppose that a mother could use it just as effectively when dealing with her picky daughter. Your teacher called me today. She said you're still not eating at lunch. You need to eat. It's not healthy. Whatever you say, Mom. Hey, honey. How was your day? Christina still isn't eating. I guess forcing her to eat won't do anything. I'll try to use positive reinforcement instead. Be extra nice. Hey, honey. I tried to make you something new. I think you'll really like it. You should try it. Good job, honey. I'm so proud of you. You should take another bite. Golly, do you really kiss mom? This is the best bread I've ever had. Oh, honey, that smells good. This video depicts the operant conditioning method of positive reinforcement, in which a mother is able to condition her daughter to eat food, even though she is a picky eater. Like the study with the anorexic girl, the positive reinforcement comes into play when the daughter eats the food because the mother provides her with praise. Thus, positive reinforcement seems to be a useful method for increasing food consumption and potentially mitigating the negative effects of other psychiatric disorders.